Um, OpenAI has launched a web crawler that they call GPT Bot. Um, uh, the article frames it as amid plans for GPT-5. That's you know that might might or might not be true. This is kind of their answer to they they had um, web search and the way that it worked was it used Bing because you know Microsoft is deeply in, invested in OpenAI so there's a strong relationship there, and Bing is Microsoft's um, uh, search engine. So they gave ChatGPT access to Bing. Uh, and it would find something, and then it would read the article, and it would keep on going to give you the information. And what they found out was it would get itself around paywalls very easily and, and <laughs> other, other very, various blocks and stuff like that. And so this is more of an indirect route where what they're doing is they're just kind of – they're letting their, their web crawlers – crawl across the entire web and, and use links to kind of follow up where, where it needs to go and stuff like that and learn up-to-date information so that it can then be used to train future models. So it doesn't have to, they don't, you don't have to like make an exerted effort to create a bunch of training data around the web and then hand it to it for the next kind of set of training data. It literally can find that information on its own. Um, and that way it's not, it's not like responding to a user request to read a New York Times article around the paywall. It's just say, read the entire web that you can and then respond to requests appropriately kind of thing. Um, cool. And then the other well, side of I it. I have a couple questions. Sure. So uh, web crawlers to me have this connection, this, this sort of controversial side of them mm -hmm. in that uh, who owns the data, who mm -hmm. owns the content? Is it okay to mm -hmm. <laughs> scrape someone's website? Did Google just get away with it because they did it early before people started these questions, started asking these questions? And the second question being, there are other scrapers that are attempting to compete with Google's index to mm -hmm. create their own, you know, index of the web to mm -hmm. compete so that there isn't just this monopoly on search that Google has, right? Right, right? And yet they have been able to cover such an insignificant portion of it that it's almost useless. Their, their indexes are almost useless. I don't know useless. that I would agree. That may, I think most of their competitors, the weakness isn't the extent to which they have scraped the web, it's how effective their algorithms are. Oh, interesting. At, at, okay. at giving you the thing that is most likely to make you happy from its whole index. So you so think, think that their Google's indexes that. are relatively similar. relatively comparable. Yeah. yeah. So there's how long no does it take to, to to Oh, I don't know. I couldn't okay. answer that, but there's no technical limitation to prevent someone from being able to do so because all of them are just based on the idea of you read a page and not only do you index all the content on it, but also you find any links that are on it and then you follow those and you keep on going kind of thing. And since the whole web is connected. Okay. So, so will AI right, be can, better can than Google better. at indexing the web? It that might is be. The question. Um, well, okay. So, to your and, first question, and also then serving up the, in, the. To your first question, very likely yes. Now, there's something called the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act that is incredibly nebulous. Mm -hmm. It has been at the heart of all of the lawsuits in the past about web scraping cases. If you got, if you got some somewhat private or proprietary information that made itself into Google's, especially in Europe where they have very specific laws, GDPR and all that, to protect against this. Um, uh, if a web crawler did in fact, or web scraper did in fact find that information and then revealed it to other people through a search engine, they, you know, that's the basis for different lawsuits. Mainly, like the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act doesn't specifically say you're not allowed to scrape stuff. It literally says something like you're not allowed to use a computer for something other than its intended purpose or something like that. It's like I really, know. really generic. I and know. so they can come up with, and it's a federal law, so they can come up with a lot of high level federal cases that are really just based on super loose um, uh, interpretation of mm -hmm, stuff. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, because in fact, they are being sued. In uh, late June, a class action was filed against OpenAI by 16 plaintiffs alleging that the AI firm had accessed private information. Here's an interesting part. From ChatGPT user interaction. So the, pl the, 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 the claim was by me sitting there and talking to ChatGPT, that's supposed to be incredibly private information, there's claims that that information was leaked or was accessible to other people. That might just be bad database management on OpenAI's part because they were growing so fast. Wow, that's happened in the past. interesting. You know, you end up, you log in and you see someone else's search history or whatever. Like, that's mm -hmm. happened in other cases. Sure. That isn't necessarily related to this. Um, That'll be interesting to, to learn if that is revealed through this case. I don't think, 
I don't think it's an ongoing problem. I think it did happen. I think, you know, I don't mm. think they expected to Makes blow sense. up at the speed that they mm -hmm. did. I actually, honestly, I was I was using it for something earlier this week, and I started getting some really, really weird responses. Like, it, it, it felt like it was a dreaming robot. It was really, really what? weird. It got really repetitive, <laughs> and it said really weird. It was very, very strange. I was like, is is the is the AGI trying to emerge and, and talk to us right now? <laughs> no. I don't know. I think it was just, I don't know if it was a bug. I, I, it's hard to tell whether it's my computer was going especially slow and there was some sort of problem with 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 caching it, but it doesn't seem like that was the case. Uh, or if their systems were just overwhelmed or I, I honestly don't know. This is such an emergent phenomenon. It's hard to really know what the, the heart of the problem is when there's new problems and stuff like that. Wild. Yeah, very, very Dreaming wild. Dreaming robots. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, do, do electric sheep dream of, I don't remember what the line is. Um, and then the the last part, the, the, headline order, the headline of the article said that as we're approaching GPT-5, um, the only reason that anyone believes that is because they filed a trademark application for it. Um, Sam Altman himself says that they're, quote, nowhere close to beginning training it, uh, just because they still have to do a lot of safety audits and stuff like that. But to note, uh, within the trademark application, they did put a couple of new functionality things that we can get from ChatGPT, but only because of integrations with other things, uh, including conversion of audio data files into text and voice and speech recognition. So, you know, very much the AI that movies have always told us where you can talk to it. That would be awesome. Uh, and it can talk back. And yeah, so could be could be very, very, very exciting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah.